Welcome everyone. My name is Jessica Boda and I'm the project manager on the Unified Terminology Governance Project, or UTG. This session will provide training on the overall process for submitting a vocabulary change proposal. It's highly recommended that you watch the Terminology Governance and Publishing at HL7 session before watching this session if you aren't familiar with the HL7 terminology web pages. This session is part of a three-part series for those interested in submitting a vocabulary change proposal. The first part will focus on the overall process for submitting the change proposal. The second session will focus on the detailed changes to the terminology artifacts when creating a change proposal. And the third and final session will focus on the custom tools that have been made available for UTG for those who wish to edit the content but might be less familiar with the underlying technical development tools. During this session, we'll discuss the new Unified Terminology Governance process for vocabulary maintenance at HL7 with a focus on the overall process for submission of proposed changes for the HL7 terminology. We'll go over all the steps to submit vocabulary change proposals, including becoming a submitter, accessing and navigating the UTG JIRA project, creating a proposal ticket, monitoring consensus review as a submitter, and addressing proposal outcomes. Understanding the unified terminology governance process is important as it gives them insight into how these terminology pages are updated once your proposed vocabulary changes are approved by reviewers. The transition to the unified terminology governance solution for vocabulary maintenance at HL7 from the previous harmonization approach introduces several beneficial changes. First and foremost, all published HL7 terminology artifacts are now accessible and browsable in one place. There's no need for bulky downloads or installing tooling to browse the content. Vocabulary maintenance is now a continuous process. Harmonization used to occur three times per year, which led to delays in implementing vocabulary changes. With the rapid development of implementation guides, it's really important to be able to push changes through more quickly to support the implementer community. And with this process, changes can be pushed through on demand. The UTG vocabulary maintenance process relies on a JIRA-based ticketing system that supports the workflow needed to implement vocabulary changes. Previous requests were created using Word documents, GForge tickets, and emails, so there was never any transparency or central repository to see all proposals. The UTG process uses platform-independent tooling so that the vocabulary change submitter can create the terminology changes. Changes were previously done using rich text editors, which often led to typos and errors in the content. The vocabulary proposals go through a consensus-based workflow where reviewers can vote on the approval of changes. Once requested changes are approved, changes are managed using Git and Subversion. Through this process, all artifacts are versioned and change managed independently. These improvements provide a more responsive and transparent method for vocabulary maintenance that we believe will benefit the community. Vocabulary change proposals provide a fully specified solution to a terminology issue or deficiency. This includes the technical details of the proposed content changes to the terminology artifacts needed in UTG. These are browsable in the same way that the entire HL7 terminology is on a consensus review build page. These will be reviewed and voted on, and if approved, the proposed changes will be implemented in the current build. Submitters have special permissions in JIRA that allow them to draft and submit proposals as a JIRA ticket, so they must be familiar with the tools and processes required. Before a proposal can enter consensus review, meaning that the proposal is available to the community for review, comment, and approval or rejection, the ticket will undergo technical review and examination by the terminology curator who's notified when proposals are submitted. If no problems are found, the terminology curator creates browsable web pages in the context of the rest of the HL7 terminology and transition the ticket into consensus review. Once the vocabulary change proposal is in the consensus review workflow state, the community is notified that the ticket is available for review. Reviewers can make suggestions and ask questions using JIRA comments, eliminating the need to set up scheduled calls or other mechanisms to discuss the proposal. Reviewers must cast negative or affirmative votes to progress the proposal. 
For those interested in becoming a reviewer, please check out our training session focused on reviewing and voting on change proposals. Once a proposal is approved, the changes are sent for implementation in the UTG current content. If rejected, the ticket is archived for future reference and the changes will not be implemented. Each change proposal follows these workflow paths. Each box represents a state that a proposal may enter based on the conditions described in these training sessions. In this session, we focus on the major pathways related to the submission of change proposals, circled in red. The vocabulary issues and change proposals are all entered and managed within the HL7 JIRA environment, and more specifically in the UTG Change Proposal or UP project. Each set of HL7 terminology change proposals are managed as a single JIRA issue or ticket. The only requirement to view the vocabulary tickets is a JIRA login, which HL7 members should already have. While the search in JIRA is fairly intuitive, HL7 offers several how-to webinars on JIRA basics, searching JIRA issues, and working with JIRA issues via their HL7 Documentation and Help Confluence page. To navigate to the UTG tickets, log in to the HL7 JIRA page at jira.hl7.org. Click on Projects in the top bar and pick the UP project. If you do not see it, then select View All Projects and pick the UP UTG Change Proposal project. Clicking on the project name will bring you to a page that by default lists all open issues. Now that we've discussed some of the background on submitting change proposals, we will cover how to create a change proposal. This outlines the main steps for submitting a change proposal. Some of these steps require a one-time setup process that won't be needed again when submitting subsequent change proposals. The first requirement is an HL7 JIRA account. HL7 members should already have an account, which grants access to both the UTG JIRA project and the Confluence pages that hold the UTG documentation. You submit a request to become a submitter, as special permissions are required to submit a proposal. You then create the change request through the UTG JIRA project. This includes all of the detailed information related to the requested changes. We have made specialized UTG tools available for those who are not intimately familiar with GitHub and the Fire XML resources. Next, you must download a copy of the most up-to-date content, and then you make your changes to the vocabulary artifacts and save the changes. Lastly, you submit the changes, which include both the information in the JIRA ticket and the modified artifacts. The changes will then be open for review by the community for comment and feedback. To become a submitter, you request the submitter role through the Vocabulary Maintenance at HL7 Confluence page. These pages provide an overview of the UTG process, including how to become a vocabulary reviewer or submitter. They also provide a brief overview of each process step and links to more detailed information and documentation. Once you have a Confluence account, Click the Request Submitter Permissions link from the Vocabulary Maintenance at HL7 page. A contact information form will pop up. If you're an HL7 member, simply fill out your details and click Submit. This will send an email to a JIRA administrator who will ensure that you are given the correct permissions to be able to submit change proposals. If you are not an HL7 member and wish to become a submitter, you must leave a comment in the note field explaining why you want to become a submitter and describe your relationship to HL7 and UTG. To initiate the creation of a change proposal, navigate to the UP project in HL7 JIRA and click the blue Create button on the top of the page. This initiates a pop-up window with required and optional fields to be entered for the proposal. Ensure that the project is UTG change proposals in the project field. If you are submitting a change proposal, select Change Request from the Issue Type dropdown. The other type is Technical Correction, which is to be used only when a previously approved proposal was implemented improperly due to bugs in process or tooling, and the error must be corrected to bring the source of truth back into alignment with what was decided in consensus. Next, enter a short summary about the content issue, which will serve as a convenient title. For the Sponsor field, Enter the HL7 workgroup or other organization that is sponsoring the proposal. 
Then select all applicable proposal type checkboxes for the HL7 content categories that will be affected by the proposed changes to the code systems and or value sets. In the proposal description field, comprehensively describe the changes being requested by the proposal and why they are needed. People will use this to understand why you are proposing the change. The change objects field identifies which artifacts are being modified as part of your proposal. For changes to existing code systems and value sets, enter the URL of the artifact in the current build. This will help reviewers see the current state of the artifacts as they exist prior to the proposal. If you're creating a new artifact as part of your proposal, enter new followed by the abbreviation for the artifact type you are creating, such as new CS for a code system, new VS for a value set, or new NS for a naming system, followed by a colon, then enter the name of the artifact. This will help reviewers find your artifact to review during the consensus review process. The assignee will be you as the person who entered the change request. In the case where you are creating a starter ticket for someone else, select the person who will be designing the vocabulary changes to be submitted with the proposal. Once all of the required fields have been entered and you are satisfied with the information provided, click Create to enter the ticket. A pop-up will appear with a link to the new ticket. Click it to review the change request. Change requests that have been entered are in the environment setup state, indicating that the submitter may want to download any of the optional UTG tools, depending on their preference for editing vocabulary artifact files and using Git. We will discuss these tools at length in the third session of this series for submitters. Information provided in the change request can always be modified after initial creation by selecting Edit at the top bar of the proposal. Once the change request has been created, it is time to create the changes that are being requested in the proposal. You must start by downloading a fresh local copy of all HL7 terminology content. The content source for the new change proposals is a Git archive called Bitbucket, which is used to interface easily with the JIRA workflow. This archive is refreshed by the curator after implemented proposals are validated in the Git source of truth. The master source of truth content is updated frequently, so it's important to start fresh for each proposal. The single Bitbucket Git archive in the cloud holds all the change tickets currently being developed or voted on. Git branch logic and control is used to keep track of all of this, which requires each new ticket to have its own branch. If you are not already using Git with your own tooling, we are recommending the use of SourceTree, which has been fully tested and documented for use with UTG. Such tools are used to create a local copy of the master content and the branch for the ticket. We will discuss the details of these tool operations in the third session in this submitter series. Once the copy of the current content has been downloaded to your local machine and you know what tools you'll be using to make the changes to code systems and value sets, you're ready to draft a change proposal. Click the button for draft a proposal to move it into the proposal draft state. You can add a comment, but it is not necessary. Now you can begin editing the vocabulary artifacts. All of the terminology artifacts are XML files. You can edit these XML files using your editor of choice, such as a text editor, XML aware editor, or a branch aware editor. The UTG project has developed an editor for a more user-friendly editing experience called the Fire Toolkit. We will discuss the use of this tool in the third submitter session. It is important to ensure that the XML syntax in each artifact that you have edited is legal before you submit a completed change proposal or perform a local build of the UTG pages. Once the changes to the content are complete, it is time to save or commit your changes to the Bitbucket repository. Save your changes locally and then commit the changes to Bitbucket. To finish, you must then push your changes to the Bitbucket cloud. The Bitbucket environment with the history of your commits can be accessed from the development section of the proposal, which lists your branch and your commits. This helps to verify that you've saved and uploaded your changes before you submit your proposal. We will focus on the detailed steps to save your content changes in the next submitter's tutorial. Once the change proposal ticket has been created and the proposed changes have been made and checked for accuracy, it's time to submit your proposal. 
Before submitting, please ensure that the proposal ticket contains all information that will be needed by a reviewer, including the correct URLs for the artifacts being modified. You need to check all value sets that reference the items that you've changed to make sure that they are still okay. If not okay, you may need to modify these value sets to accommodate your changes as part of the proposal as well. Each proposal requires approval by a sponsoring workgroup or organization, and the date of approval needs to be entered in the Sponsor Approval Date field. This can be found by clicking Edit at the top of the proposal. Lastly, ensure that the changes have been uploaded as part of your proposal. You should see a development section in the lower right area of your proposal with a link that says One Commit, or more if you have committed several changes at different times. You can click this link to examine the commit diffs to see the changes that you have submitted. Once you've ensured that everything is accurate and complete, click Submit at the top bar of the ticket. The ticket will then enter the submitted state. At this point, no further changes are made to the proposal unless the submit processing uncovers technical errors in the proposal. Once a change proposal has been submitted, automated validation processes and manual checks done by the terminology curator will check the proposed changes for technical correctness. A clean, complete, and error-free proposal gets its content rendered by a build which is used by reviewers to see the changes. If technical errors are found in the proposal, it's returned to proposal draft state so the errors can be fixed, after which it needs to be resubmitted. After passing all of the error checks and successful build is run, the link to the build is added to the proposal in the Published Example field and enters the consensus review state. At this point, the proposal content is locked and cannot be changed and is open for review, commenting, and voting by the community. As the submitter, you will likely want to monitor the status of your ticket, as well as votes and feedback. We'll talk about some of the ways to do this. Once pushed into consensus review, the first thing you may want to verify is the published example link to the generated web pages that contain your proposed updated content. In this example, a new value set was requested. To review it, click on the link in the published example field. This will direct you to the entry page from the build of the proposed changes. Verify that you're looking at the entry page for this proposal ID and consensus review at the top of the page. Next. Navigate through the tabs and subtabs to locate the changed or new artifact or artifacts if multiple artifacts have been modified as part of this proposal. In this case, we can use the information provided in the ticket to help locate the changes. The change objects field in this ticket indicated that we need to find a new value set, so we will start by selecting the value set tab. The proposal also had a proposal type of unified so we will select the Unified tab to filter on only Unified value sets. Lastly, we can select the Yes, No, Unknown, Not Asked value set for the title noted in the Change Objects field to see what was created by the submitter. The value set has been fully built by the IG publisher so that all parts of it, including the expansion, can be examined as part of the review. Throughout the consensus review process, you will receive emails to the account associated with your JIRA login about your proposal. Most of these emails will be triggered by comments being added. It's important to monitor these as people may have questions or feedback and will not cast a vote until they hear from you. In this example, a reviewer is letting the submitter know that there are issues with part of the proposed content changes. As proposals that are being discussed and voted on have their content locked, Changes to address such identified issues are done by revising the proposal and resubmitting. We will discuss this a bit later. Each vocabulary change proposal ticket contains an area at the bottom of the proposal where comments can be entered and replied to. Comments can be seen by everyone viewing the proposal, regardless of whether or not they are a reviewer. Anyone may make comments on proposals. This is useful in soliciting broad feedback from the community on particular change proposals. To enter a comment, scroll to the bottom of the proposal and click the comment button. This will bring up a simple text editor where you can enter your comment. To make sure a certain person sees your comment, you can tag them in the comment by using the at symbol and then starting to type in their name. Jira will bring up a filtered list of name matches of known users. Once you identify the correct user, Click it in the drop-down and it will appear in blue text in your comment. 
Anyone tagged in a comment will receive an email with the comment regardless of whether or not they are watching the issue. Once done, click Add to post the comment. All comments are tied to your HL7 JIRA account, so everyone will be able to tell that you made the comment and can reply to you directly if they desire. To reply to a comment, simply go to the comment of interest and click the reply link below the comment. This will bring up the text editor to enter the reply. Once a reply is entered, the comments will be nested to show that they are related and help maintain an organized threaded comment section for each change proposal. Lastly, you're able to like or dislike a comment or reply, similar to many social media platforms. This allows you to show agreement or disagreement to any comment without having to enter one. Commenting is a great way to engage with the community without the need to set up a meeting. There are two reasons why a submitted proposal may need to be revised. The first is that technical issues may have been found when preparing the proposal for consensus review. In this case, the terminology curator will return it to proposal draft state and add a comment on what needs to be fixed. The second case is that sometimes community comments on a proposal and review will indicate additional changes that you may have initially forgotten to make to the content or point out typos with the proposed content and so forth. If this is the case, you can pull your proposal back into the proposal draft state to make changes. To do so, click the workflow button and then the needs revision button from the top bar of the proposal. You can now make additional modifications to the content, save the changes, and resubmit the proposal. Revising a proposal aborts the current consensus review process. A record of the vote so far is made as a comment and the ticket must begin a new cycle from the proposal draft state. This triggers a fresh round of voting on the proposal after the proposal is resubmitted and checked again for technical accuracy. You will likely want to monitor how people are voting on your proposal during the consensus review process. To view the voting, click on the voting tab underneath the details area of the proposal. This will hide some of the proposal information and display detailed information on the voting. You can always see the hidden proposal information by clicking back to the default tab. The voting area displays information about who has voted positively and negatively. If you have reviewer permissions, you are also able to vote on your own proposal. The voters list includes the names of everyone who has voted. You can also see which voting quorum requirements have or have not yet been met. In all proposals, oversight group votes or OSG votes are part of quorum. Members of these groups help HL7 provide oversight for different focus areas and have a higher voting weight than others. In this example, there are three OSG groups that are part of the voting quorum. We can see that one of them has been met and two have not. This is indicated by yes or no. Proposals progress by accumulating a total number of required vote points. OSG voter and super voter groups are weighted by accumulating multiple vote points per affirmative or negative cast. If you're interested in learning more details about the voting groups, weights, and computations, please watch the session for reviewing and voting on HL7 change proposals. Proposals can only be approved once all voting requirements have been met. Proposals are often held up if oversight group requirements are not met. You can expedite this by reaching out to voters whose participation is needed to move the proposal forward. As we saw in the previous slide, the voting details section of the proposal indicates which voting requirements have and have not been met. The oversight group voters are all listed in the people section on the right side of the proposal, which allows you to identify the voters in needed oversight groups to contact to cast a vote and progress the proposal. You can click on the ellipsis to expand the list to see all OSG voters in a group. You can contact these people using the comments to tag certain people to urge them to vote. Tagged users will receive an email notification with the comment. In addition to tagging specific people, you may discuss your proposal with the appropriate work groups to determine how to expedite them. Once a change proposal is in consensus review, there are a handful of possible outcomes that we will discuss next. Once a change proposal is submitted, it enters the submitted state as displayed in the workflow diagram here. 
If it's been submitted with all relevant information, along with the proposed changes and has been validated, the proposal enters the consensus review state, shown here. At this point, the proposal is open for review and voting. When voting is completed, there are three final workflow states, shown in green in the diagram. Proposal implemented after the proposal is approved, change rejected if it is rejected, or withdrawn if you decide not to move forward with the proposal. There are also some intermediary workflow states shown in blue that a proposal may enter before it ends up in one of the three final states. These are tabled and meeting needed. Constructive comments during consensus review may lead you to declare that the change proposal needs revision and it can be returned to the proposal draft state. We will discuss each of these states and what they might mean for your proposal. Note that in the live system, there are some additional states and transitions for administrative overrides. We've removed them here for clarity and simplicity as they are only used by administrators. During consensus review and in the face of reviewer criticism and negative comments, you may decide that the change proposal is improper and should not be implemented. As the submitter, you can move the ticket into the withdrawn state by selecting the workflow button at the top of your proposal and then selecting abandon. As with all proposals, the ticket with all of the comments will be archived for future reference. Ideally, there is affirmative consensus and the change proposal is approved. This occurs once all voting requirements are met and 70% or more of the votes cast are affirmative. In this case, the ticket transitions to the sent for implementation state and the design changes are sent to the terminology curator to be implemented in the current build of the HL7 terminology. The changes are released in a short period of time and watchers are notified of the release. The content is available in the current build of the HL7 terminology as soon as the changes are released. The proposal is transitioned into the proposal implemented state once the changes have been made available. There also may be negative consensus, an agreement that the proposal should be rejected. This happens when voting requirements are met and less than 30% of the votes cast are affirmative. In this case, the ticket transitions to the change rejected state and is archived and retained for future audits and reference. Watchers are notified that the changes will not be implemented. If the voting requirements have been met and less than 70% of votes are definitive, meaning there are between 30% and 70% positive votes, then this triggers the proposal to move into the meeting needed state. This indicates that the proposal is controversial and consensus is not achieved. Therefore, a meeting is needed to resolve the controversies. As the submitter of the proposal, you are responsible for setting up a conference call, either on an appropriate work group call or a separate call of interested parties to reach an agreement. Setting up such a meeting is a manual step that must occur outside of the JIRA workflow, and as a submitter, progressing the proposal forward from here is in your hands. Following the meeting, you must add a comment on the proposal describing whether it was agreed to approve, reject, withdraw, or revise the proposal, and link to the meeting minutes of the discussion. The terminology curator will then push the proposal into the appropriate final state, or you will pull it back into proposal draft to make revisions and resubmit. As an intermediary workflow state, you're able to table the proposal because the current solution is unclear and more time is needed to fully discuss and understand the material. Tabling a proposal will pause the voting process. To table a proposal, select the workflow button and click table. Tabling may be helpful if you want to pause voting until certain people have gotten a chance to take a look at the proposal before the automatic vote tallying triggers a transition, or if you'd like to first discuss the proposal in an upcoming meeting. As discussed earlier in the session, sometimes it's determined that a change proposal contains errors or did not completely or correctly include all of the proposed changes. If the criticisms can be addressed with modifications to the current proposal, then you can pull the proposal back into proposal draft to make revisions and resubmit. Remember that the voting will reset once it re-enters consensus review and must start anew. From there, the proposal may proceed into any of the normal workflow states out of consensus review as described previously.
You can pull it back in draft proposal state at any time by selecting the workflow button and clicking needs revision. Throughout this session, we learned about the unified terminology governance approach for vocabulary maintenance at HL7 and how that applies to vocabulary change proposal submitters. Changes in the UTG process can be requested, reviewed, and voted on at any time, rather than depending on a calendar-driven process. Depending on the HL7 community's level of participation, the requested changes can be approved and implemented in the current build in as short a time as a few days. The documentation for submitting a vocabulary change proposal is all freely available on the HL7 UTG Confluence pages. Please keep an eye out for the next two sessions in this series that will focus on the details of making the content changes and the UTG custom tooling. That concludes this session, and we can't wait to see your change proposals be implemented and improve the HL7 vocabulary.